Welcome to July Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we're not talking about the news. We'd actually talked about that previously in the day. It is actually uh, January 21st. It is 6 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And we had talked about three stories that had led to this little dip that we are experiencing right now in the crypto market. And you can see right now, Bitcoin is below 30,000. It was at 41,000. Uh, Ethereum is uh, just above one, one grand. I think it's gonna go lower than that. And uh, everything's pretty much a big sea of red. And we talked about why that potentially could be, but it really doesn't matter. What, what really matters is the narrative that is being pushed out there. And that narrative is that this is, you know, cryptocurrency is going to go to the moon and you just got to, you know, just hold on and, and hold it forever and it'll go up to a million dollars and you're going to be a billionaire tomorrow. And it's, it's not the case. That That's not it. You have to be a little smart. You have to be a little focused and you have to have some ice in your veins. Now, holding is great. I mean, I've been doing this for quite some time, but there's an even bigger skill. And I need to challenge you right now to really think about what you're going to do with all these gains because the people who uh, fail to plan are planning to fail and that is exactly uh, what is going to happen so i was thinking about all these things this morning and i was listening to uh, one of my favorite authors and podcasters uh, tim ferris and he was talking here to uh, kevin rose one of his business partners and they were talking about bitcoin uh, he holds bitcoin and uh, he was talking about cryptocurrency. And, and Kevin has uh, has been in the game for quite some time. And uh, he, what what Tim said was, he goes, what's interesting about crypto, he says, is that I meet a lot of people uh, in my circle who have made a lot of money in crypto. He says, I'll always ask him, you know, well, you know, how'd you get into crypto and, and what happened? And people will always tell him the same story. Oh, I made like, you know, a couple million dollars. Oh, I made it 500,000. And he, he says, but the question I always ask them is, well, when did you cash out? When did you, you know, sell? Oh, I didn't sell. Oh, I, I still got it. So what happened? Ah, well, I wrote it up and wrote it all the way down. <laughs> then I'm writing it back up again. And uh, he says, very rarely does he find the person who says, yeah, I cashed out and I started a business or I did something else. And uh, it really got me to thinking about, you know, we talk about on this channel about where we're going. But one of the things that we don't talk enough about is to plan ahead and make sure that you have all everything in a row, ducks in a row, to make sure that you are ready when the time comes. Because uh, it's not to me like there's there's like different skills you learn. There's there's skills of of how to invest, how to dollar cost average, how to have ice in your veins and not really care when the market takes a big enormous dip like it did today, and really not care. But then one of the other skills that you have to learn. And that I'm learning actually myself is is how to take these profits. And, and if we don't, we're going to be in a world of hurt because we're going to ride it all, all the way up to who knows what what Bitcoin can go to a million, 500,000, 150,000. Uh, it just depends. Uh, but the big thing is, you know, when do we sell? So we're going to talk about that today in detail. So just as a, a quick refresher, just remember everything goes in four year cycles. Uh, this is January 2012. It always goes the same thing. Having to the all-time high in 2013, big enormous dip uh, in, four, in 2014, then a big reset uh, where everything kind of just goes sideways 2015. And then we take a look at 2016, we had a halving. 2017 was that monstrous uh, all-time high, then a massive dip, and then a reset in 2019. Now we turn the corner and we just got into 2021. 2020 was our halving. We're going to see an all-time high. So what we're looking at is, is this chart that looks something like this, and it looks enormous. But really, that's not the way the chart should look. Uh, if we have to zoom out and take a look at what's going to happen over the next four years, and it's going to look like this uh, if history repeats itself over the last eight years. 2020 was just a blip. 2021 will have massive, massive gains uh, if history repeats itself. But then you have to remember, just a short time later, we're going to see a huge correction. It's going to be a dip and then a reset and sideways action. And you have to make sure you know what you need to do to make sure that you are not like me, which was right here, me getting in right at almost the top, uh, around 10,000 or so, riding it up, thinking I'm a genius, and then watching it go down and then back up a little bit and going, oh, I'll be okay, and then just going down, 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 and then sideways. We can't do that. I don't want you to be like me and have to write out another four years 
until you're looking at uh, what 20 2025 so uh, that's not my goal here my goal is to make sure that uh, you know all the options now again this is not financial advice but I'm just gonna tell you what I'm gonna do so let's just jump in so first of all we have to take a look at where do we think the market's going this is where I think it's going um, I've made my price predictions uh, there was a video I'll link at the very end and these are all the price predictions for everything that I hold in my portfolio I tell you exactly why I hold all these different crypto assets in my portfolio and what I think uh, is gonna happen with them this was on January 7th and Bitcoin was hot I mean everything was hot yeah, Bitcoin at 38,000, Ethereum 1,200, yeah, about the same. Uh, Chainlink at 17 went up and down. Everything went up and down. And then I took a look and I said, this is what the prediction is uh, for me in 2021. And, and then we're going to take a look at the supply. So like Bitcoin, Ethereum, we all know Bitcoin's got 21 million. I mean, it's 18 and a half right now. Ethereum, you know, it's, just, it's a limited supply. It can be fluctuate, whatever. I don't really care. Chainlink, it's got a, it's, my prediction was $35 at the end of 2021. Very conservative, I feel. Uh, I'm not a, a big shuckster and like, uh, you know, go out there and say, yeah, Bitcoin's going to do a million and it's going to a million on April 7th at 4.30 a.m. I mean, it's just this is ridiculous. So, I I make very conservative uh, bets, I guess, very conservative calls, we'll say. So, chain length thirty five, I can see that. And there's a one billion um, circulating supply or max supply. Cardano, I see it. It's at three dollars, and I, you know, for a forty five billion uh, max supply, and and everything else. So you can watch that video. I'll link it there. And then the the next two columns. I just said this is the probability on a zero to ten. Zero was where there's not a snowball's chance in hell it's going to happen, and ten means I'm almost certain, or I'm 100 percent certain, 99.9 .9 percent certain it's going to happen. And I gave those a ten. Like so, Bitcoin, my price prediction is 150k. I think it's a ten. Uh, Ethereum, I gave it an eight for probability, and I explained exactly why. So that's not the point of this video. You can watch that video later. What it is is exit strategies, and this was my old exit strategy. And the thing with with exit strategies is that when I put this out, it made sense. I mean, it still is, you know, something that people look forward to and they and they say, okay, I can do this. But I needed to simplify everything. It's it's just like Steve Jobs says, it's it actually takes a lot of work to make things simple. It's actually very easy to make things complex. So you have to to, to boil it down to the message that you wanna do. So for this one, it didn't really work out too well. So here's what I did. I said, okay, I'm gonna throw this away. I wanna, I wanna just make it super simple for everybody uh, for what I'm doing and uh, then they, they I can leave it up to them. So for me, it's an 80-20 rule. 80-20 rule, if you're in business, you know it's an old adage, 80-20 rule uh, means that uh, 80% of all the gains or things that you actually get out of your job really comes from 20% of your effort. And uh, it's just uh, something that uh, I felt like I could streamline the whole process. So the A20 rule for me, and we're going to start with, with Ethereum because it's pretty easy. So I'm going to say like this. If I had 100 Ethereum, okay, I'm going to 80-20 it, which means I'm going to sell 80%, in this case, 80. And I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold on for 20. I'm not going to sell these. And this is for all my cryptocurrency. There is at some point where I say to myself, okay, I need to hold on because you don't know if it's going to go to like, not only to the moon, but to Mars and Jupiter and beyond. So you have to hold on for some because you never know when that moon shot, that, that Mars shot, that Jupiter shot is coming. So hold on to them. So for this example, it's very easy. 80, 20. I'm going to sell 80 of my Ethereum and I'll hold on for 20 for this cycle, for this four year cycle. In 2025, I mean, I'll still be around, I'll still be on this channel and I'll tell you what my, my predictions are there, but this is what I wanna go for. So I gotta take a look at the probability, eight. So I believe this is going to actually hit to 10,000. Uh, that is my prediction for Ethereum. I think it's gonna go to 10K. Some people will say, you know, 5K, some people will say 30K. I think it's around 10K. I think it's a pretty reasonable expectation for what Ethereum could potentially do. So if my probability is pretty high, I'm going to skewer this. I'm going to skew this to a higher number. And I'll make an example of that in, uh, for EOS in, in a bit. So what I did was I just say, okay, I'm going to sell in five points. I'm going to sell 80 of my Ethereum. And to make that simple, five divided by 80 is 16. So 16 plus 16 32. 32 plus 16 is 48. 48 plus 16 is 64. And 64 plus 16 is 80. So at some point, you're going to sell all of your Ethereum or 80%, 80-20 rule. You're going to sell 80 
and you're going to hold on to 20. Sell 80, hold on to 20. This is the 80-20 rule. So what do I want to do? Well, I want to pick some price points. Now, if I think it's going to go to 10,000, I'm going to, I always work my, my way back. So if I say, okay, I know it's going to be 10,000. I want to skewer this to a higher number. I don't want to sell it at 10,000 at the very last part and then maybe put down like 3,000 here, 1,500 here, 1,000 here, and 900 there. That wouldn't make any sense because I feel it's going to go to 10,000, but I need to take profits along the way. And the reason why I need to do that is because of stuff like this. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen with the governments. We don't know what's going to happen with another pandemic. We just don't know what could potentially happen for this market and what could just drive it haywire. I mean, we've seen uh, the history of what's going on, all these four-year cycles, but what if something doesn't happen or what if we don't hit it or what if we hit a speed bump? So I need you to make sure that you know you take a look at this objectively and say, maybe I should look at a list. Again, not financial advice. This is definitely what I'm going to do. So the very first price point I'm going to say is eh, about 2000 right? Which is uh, going to be 20% of the 80 because I'm always going to do five points. Five points seems like a pretty good reasonable offer to me. So I got 16 so 16 times 2,000, I'm gonna get $32,000, pretty good. And there's a number right next to this, it's, it's 1993. What am I talking about here? Well, the thing is, is that everybody likes round numbers. And a lot of times when you hit a solid round number, a lot of people sell. And when they start to sell, then you start to fluctuate down below that price point that you wanna sell for. So instead of just going, I'm selling 2,000, try like 1876 or 1,993 like I have here, or 1,852, somewhere a little bit below that so you can get your orders filled so you can make sure you have it. So the next part, I said, eh, I'll do 5,000. So 5,000 times 16 is 80,000. The next part is because I'm going to skew higher. 7,000, when it hits when he hits $7,000 times 16, that's $112,000, not too bad. Then I'm going to hit 9,000 times 16, 144. And then I'm going to hit 10,000 times 16 is 160. You add all those up, 528,000. That is not bad for just holding on for three and a half years. Sure, I'll take that. And again, I've only sold 80. I haven't sold them all because who knows, this could go to 15,000, 20,000, 27,000. Now, if it gets up to there, I might sell a little bit again, but I just want to worry about not leaving this bull run empty handed. And the question I'm going to get is this. Why not just hold your ETH all the way till it hits 10,000? You're so sure, Rob. Well, guess what? I'm very sure it's going to happen. But again, who knows? There are a lot of variables. The older I get, the more that I realize I don't know everything. So I have to make sure that I play it the best way that I possibly know how. And here's the example. So we all thought in 2017 that Bitcoin, that 20,000 was just a stepping stone and that was going to go to 25, then to 30, then to 40, then to 50. And everybody was dancing in the street. They couldn't believe it. It was going to be so great. Even John McAfee told us going to a million dollars. Institutions were here. They were going to do the uh, CBOE and the CME. They were going to do the futures contract on Bitcoin. Oh, it was going to be the greatest thing of all time. Well, guess what happened? If you would have set your sell order at 20000 and you want to sell all of it, well, guess what happened? You didn't hit it. You got to 19665 And what did you see next? Boom all the way down to 14,000. Then it went up a little bit, you're like, oh, it'll go back up. Boom, goes back down again. And off you go until it hit 5,000 and went sideways for the next year and a half. So it's up to you. I mean, again, whatever you wanna do, but I can just tell you from experience, you need to take, or I'm going to need to take uh, profits along a step ladder type of way because there is nothing worse than watching all of the gains that you thought that you had and all the plans that you thought just kind of wither away. So this is where we're going, 80-20. So when I talk about skewed or higher number, let's take a look at something like EOS. So EOS, in my prediction, uh, again, I thought that, well, EOS could go all the way up to $30 from Let's see. EOS at that point was three dollars and forty cents. I'm sure it's lower now because it's EOS. But uh, I thought, yeah, okay, go to thirty bucks because that's you know the all-time high was around twenty-nine, somewhere around there. So I go, sure, 
it could happen. But I put it, the probability I put it as a three because there's really not nothing going on. There's nothing much that you hear about. There's no type of press releases. I don't even know if anybody's been working on the EOS project, quite honestly. I know they tried to do something with a social media site called Voice. Didn't hear anything about it. So it just doesn't seem like it's really doing too much. So I put it at a very low probability to hit $30, especially with all the different products that are going on right now. Could be wrong. Hope I'm wrong. But uh, this is where we're at. So if my probability is very low that it could hit $30, I want to skew my numbers on the lower side. So instead of going like 30, 28, then 26, then 20, I want to go, okay, how about this? Let's just hit $4. I'll be happy with 4 bucks. Then $6, then 10 then 14 And then if it gets 30 hey, great, great day, right? Again, 80-20 rule. I'm going to sell, if I have 300 EOS, I want to sell 80% of 300 which is 240. Then I want to hold on for 20 or 60 because you never know. It could go all the way up to 10 million. I have no idea. So again, same thing. I'm going to put a price point. This is just arbit arbitrarily just picked. So I'm going to say four bucks. At four dollars, I'm going to sell 48. That's going to be 192 bucks. And then a couple dollars later, six bucks. I'm going to sell 48 again, 288. $10, 48, 480, 14, 48, 672, 30 times 48, 1440 for a grand whopping total of 4512. Hey, it is what it is. And again, question comes up, Rob, why don't you just hold till 30? Again, what I talked about with Bitcoin. I am not in that position. I do not want to do that. You're welcome to do whatever you can, whatever you want to do. This is just what I feel like I should do. Next one. And I'm only going to go over a couple more. And I'll explain why in a second. So this is Chainlink. So I felt like Chainlink, I feel, could go to at least $35. Uh, it's a very low prediction, but uh, again, conservative numbers. But again, um, people think that Chainlink's going to $250. And I'm sure it could, but did we ever think that we would ever see? I, I remember hearing people going, we're never going to see Bitcoin below 30,000. Well, here we are again. So whatever. So the probability for this one was very high. I, I picked it at nine, I think at least 35. So I'm going to skew to the higher number. So I start with 35. Then I just arbitrarily go eh, about 32, 30, 28, and 26. Because right now, I think it's like at 17 bucks. Uh, but when I did this price prediction, I think it was like over 21, 22, somewhere around there. So Again, 26, I want to sell 80%. If I had a 1,000 link, 80% would be 800 I'm going to sell, and I'm going to hold on to 200. Pretty simple, right? So again, uh, if I want to divide that by five, because there's always five price points of uh, 800, that's 160. So 26 times 160, I got this. 28 times 160, I got this. $30 price point times 160, this, da 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 And I'm going to make 24,160. Not too shabby. And again, if you even ask me, there's it is. Why don't you just hold your link till it hits 35? Again, Bitcoin. Speaking of which, there is one exception to every rule. And this is just the way it goes. Bitcoin, I just can't get it out of my mind. I don't know what it is, but I don't know if it's Michael Saylor and all the big institutions that are coming here and they're talking about like Bitcoin can go to, you know, a million, 10 million. I don't know what it is, but I just can't give it up that easily. But I'm going to sell half. I'm going to sell half. And what am I going to sell it? On my price prediction. I believe it's going to 150000 Could go higher. Hope I'm wrong. But I'm always going to never sell everything. And I'm going to sell, in this example, I'm going to do a 50-50 split. 50% I'm going to hold on to and 50% I'm going to sell. So if I had two Bitcoin in this example, I'm going to sell one whole Bitcoin. Again, I'm going to sell 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 on certain price points. And then I will cash out. So again, 60,000 times 0.2, that's what I think the next uh, stop will be after we get through this dip, after maybe a month or so, who knows. That's 12,000 bucks, not bad. 80 times 0.2, 16,000. 110 times 0.2, 22,000. 130 times 20 points 0.2, 26. 150 times 0.2, 30, and add it all up, 106,000. So, which really, if you think about it, 106,000, or I could wait to sell one whole one, 150, I'm still okay with that. I'm still fine. So again, it all comes down to what you want to do. This is what my goals are and what I feel is best for me. This is not financial advice, but I have to remind everybody to keep your feet on the ground. And all these different sentiment that is out there like, oh, you shouldn't sell anything. You got some weak hands and you can't sell nothing. I heard the same garbage in 2017. And guess what? I held my bags for three years. I'm not doing that again. 
You can do whatever you want to do. Lastly, I'll finish off with this. In every video from now on, in my description, there's going to be a link. And they used to look like this, Exit Strategies, and I had XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and you can find those right there. What I want to do from now on is just put them all together. And it's going to, as you scroll down, it's going to look like this, Exit Strategies, all crypto exits. You're going to click on that. It's going to take you this handy dandy spreadsheet, and it's going to have every single one. So the ones we just talked about, these four, are all right here. And you can take a look and do whatever you want with them. I will be adding every single one as far as my prediction over the next week. So you can always find that there. And also, before you ask me, don't try to edit them at all because it's going to ask you for a password or something that they that uh, this is from Google Spreadsheets. I have this set to where you can view it. Anybody on the web that has the link, which you have the link in the description, can view it. You can't edit these spreadsheets. I, I got, you know, this video will probably get there, I don't know, 20,000, 30,000 views. I can't have people editing it. So don't ask me to edit it because you won't. It'll just be to view and that is it. So you're welcome to say whatever you want to in the comments section, but that is what I have for right now. And I put this together just to be safe. Again, failing to plan, you're planning to fail. And we have just seen this in the volatility of this market. Now you're welcome to do whatever you want to do. Everybody's got their different goals. These are my goals. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, I would ask you to subscribe and uh, also hit the like button. Also, if you like any of these videos I, I do, there's going to be too much going to pop up on your left and right. Let YouTube do its magic. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for listening. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.